And I'm joined now by Re Republican Representative Travis Trannell and his Democratic challenger. Okay, three, two, one. And I'm joined by Republican Representative Travis Trannell and his Democratic challenger, Carol Beals. Thanks to both of you for joining us in studio today. It's good Thanks to have you here. Well, the 49th, a very agricultural district, agribusiness, a big priority there. And I want to ask both of you, how do you specifically uh, create jobs in that arena? We'll bounce back and forth in, in letting each of you answer specific questions first. Let's start with Representative Trannell. Absolutely. Hit the nail on the head. Agriculture uh, in the state of Wisconsin is about a $60 billion business. Uh, myself, I'm a dairy farmer, milk 120 cows, run about 500 acres, and I understand uh, the importance of agriculture and what it means to our economy. This past session, we were able to pass some legislation to help farmers. Uh, we passed uh, tax credits for dairy investment. So if farmers decide they want to invest in their business, uh, we're going to help them out when it comes time to pay their taxes. We also eased some regulations so it would be easier for them to transport their products uh, from the field to the marketplace. And the other major thing is we have to understand uh, farmers are small business owners just like everybody else. They want to make sure that government stays out of their back. Uh, and we've been fortunate to have good working relationships with the DNR and making sure that uh, regulations are science-based and easy to apply. Ms. Beals, uh, improving the work uh, of, for farmers in the state. Well, you know, I sit on the Grand County Board of Supervisors, and so um, as a county, as a county, we have worked very hard to bring small businesses and job growth to the 49th Assembly District and Grand County. Um, we have a team that we uh, we encourage small businesses to apply for uh, loans, fun. Uh, um, uh, what do I want to say? Low interest loans. Um, those loans are tied directly to uh, cre job creation. So, I mean, you don't ever give out, just give out money to give out money. You give out money to create jobs. And so, if there's a direct link between those two, I'm sure that we can work together and find those avenues to help farmers as well as small businesses make that job growth in the 49th district. Well, Ms. Beals, education, of course, uh, is part of you work at UW Platteville. Yes. Uh, big cuts to public education funding, the last budget, they were significant cuts. People in Grant County have told us they feel uh, they feel them maybe a little bit more in Grant County than what we feel up here in Madison. Why do you think that is? I think it's because we have so many small rural schools. You know, when you're talking about Cassville and Lancaster and Fenimore and how they're going to fund their programs and keep moving forward, you know, $1.6 billion worth of cuts to education um, is pretty devastating to small rural communities. And when I'm out talking to people in the district, I mean, uh, they're wondering what our future holds for us, you know. Um, we want what we had as uh, growing up for ourselves. We also want that same quality of life and education for our future. And when you have a um, technical college in the, in the district as well as a four-year university campus, and those cuts are taken away, um, good jobs, and, you know, if we can have an educated workforce, and we can turn them right back around and keep them here in our state, then we've done our job. And I think that that's really got to be a focus coming up here in the next election cycle. And a lot of tough cuts had to be made to the second part of that question. And then, Representative Trannell, you'll be able to answer those both as well. If we can't, you know, tough choices, what do you cut if you, if you can't cut there? You know, I'm not sure that you, <clears throat> that you look at what you cut, you look at what you grow. And you have to be able to tie job growth and education together. Like I said, an educated workforce is our future. Educated workforce will turn our economy around. And um, two of the largest employers in the 49th are Southwest Technical College and UW Platteville. And we have to be conscientious when we make decisions at the state level and watch out for our own backyard. You know, when I'm talking to people and, um, and we have um, unapproved voucher uh, 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 Funds, funds that are going to Milwaukee and not coming out to Cuba City and Lancaster and Fenimore. Um, when we're sending our tax dollars out of district and we're taking those kind of votes, that's just not right. Representative Trannell, uh, you have three, uh, three now, young children. Congratulations on Thank the birth you. of your first son Appreciate recently. That. Um, educating those children, though, a big, I'm sure is important to you Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. But, but again, last two years, we saw those cuts from the yeah, mainly this Republican is, this cuts. This is a great topic because I think you can sum up uh, the basis of the campaigns here. Uh, Education is important. We have to educate our workforce, there's, there's no doubt. But we also have to realize spending more and more money on education does not lead to a better education. Uh, in the United States of America, we spend more money uh, 
per, on education than any other developed country in the world. But depending upon the study you look at, our results in terms of achievement are anywhere from about 15 to 19 in terms of outcome. So clearly we've shown that we're committed to education. Uh, in this past budget that I voted for, between uh, K-12, uh, the technical colleges, and the UW system, we spend 48% of all of our revenue on education. So to say that we don't care about education is ridiculous. But what we need to do is reform education. Uh, over in Iowa, there's a new school district that's going to start looking at a four-day uh, school week. I think that's interesting. Um, I've been very interested in STEM education, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, there's a group called Project Lead the Way, and what they want to do is implement new programs in the classroom where instead of giving a kid an algebra book or a trigonometry book, you say to that kid, I want you to design a robot that can throw a baseball across this room. So it's more of a hand-on application. And it, it brings kids into the fold, gets them interested in these things, because as, as Carol well knows, you know, the future is going to depend upon uh, jobs that are based more around technology, engineering, and math. We don't have a lot of labor-intensive jobs anymore, and we have to make sure our workforce is developed and ready for that. So I think we can do a good job of doing that, but at the same time understand if we really care about kids in the future, we can't saddle them with billions and billions of dollars in debt. And that's what we we're so fortunate in this state to do. We erased a $3.6 billion deficit without raising taxes. You look at our neighbors to the south in Illinois, they can't say that. The, the future there is much bleaker than the future here. So I I think if you're a parent out there, if you're a mother out there, you should be very happy about the trajectory that we're on in the state of Wisconsin because your kid's going to have an opportunity to, one, get an education, but two, and most importantly, get a job to pay it off when they graduate. Well, Representative, when we were in Lancaster, the uh, mayor there told us he was concerned about cuts in shared revenue. How do mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, he sa he's basically saying his budget can't bear uh, much more. How do we protect the needs of our municipalities? And we'll start with you on this question. How do we protect the needs of our municipalities without increasing taxes, because I know that's something yeah, Republicans talk about. Yeah, and that's a, a great question. Uh, Mayor Worley does a great job in Lancaster, but the biggest thing we can do on the state's perspective is grow the economy. And this is another part where a lot of times I feel sometimes people don't understand. We can lower taxes individually and still increase taxes to the state in terms of revenue the state receives. Because if more people are paying taxes, even though individually they're paying at a lower and reduced rate, collectively that margin can grow. So the best thing we can do is grow the economy, create jobs. In the state of Wisconsin, we pass tax credits, which have to be earned. They're not giveaways. Uh, tax credits for moving to Wisconsin, to adding employers in Wisconsin. Uh, we just received a memo from Bob Lang, the director of the Fiscal Bureau. Uh, corporate income tax uh, this year over last year up four and a half percent so we're the, the reforms that we've put in place the tough decisions that we've made businesses are starting to come to Wisconsin they're understanding that they're going to grow jobs ultimately they're going to pay more taxes which we have seen them already begin to do and we're going to have more money to dispense in terms of uh, state aid and shared revenue and ultimately I think that's the goal because there's no doubt they need money, but we can't just tax our way out of it because that doesn't work. It kills jobs, it kills businesses. We see that in Illinois, we see it in California, we see it in New York. Ms. Beals? Um, you know, part of it I agree with you, Travis, but you know, I'm concerned that some of the tax credits that we've given are only to the very wealthy and the very large corporations, and small businesses don't get an opportunity to do that. I mean, a majority of our taxes come from people who make twenty to $60,000. And um, that's Grant County. That's the 49th Assembly District. Um, we don't have a lot of very wealthy people. We have a, a lot of very proud people. Um, and so when it comes to giving tax credits out, we need to be very careful who we give them to and make sure that we are watching out for small businesses. And I think this election is all about job growth in small businesses. And we see that again and again and again at the county level. Um, Mayor Worley has good reason to be concerned about what vital services he's going to cut in the city of Lancaster, as well as every other administrator in, in southwest Wisconsin. Um, when you're talking about do you want your roads plowed today or tomorrow? And thank God we have a supply of salt sitting in the, each township hall, you know, because we had a light winter last year. Um, when we're talking about Meals on Wheels programs to our elderly, you know, those are all critical vital services that people in Cassville depend on, in Cuba City. And when, and when it comes right down to it, we have to be very mindful about what we're doing because shared revenue is the only way of funding those programs at a county level. I think some of the things we've talked about so far are things that impact a lot of different districts yes. in the state. What do you think is unique to the 49th? What is a, a pressing issue right now? Uh, what does the 49th need right now? And we'll start with you, Ms. Beals. I think they need um, somebody that's in touch with them. 
You know, when I'm out talking to people in the district, um, we talk about living paycheck to paycheck. We talk about vital services like services for our elderly, taxi rides to appointments, and being able to give, provide that quality of life not only for our elderly but for our very young. And they're concerned and they're quite concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, they say, well, I've got enough money to make it through right now, but I don't have enough money for next week or I don't have enough money for next year. And I don't think it's because they haven't planned. I think it's because we're finding that um, they're getting cuts that they didn't expect. Um, their, their checks are getting smaller and smaller and, and things cost more. Gas is, you know, $3.49 a gallon. Um, it's a little cheaper if you go to Iowa, but, you know, you have to be able to get there. Um, but you know, it, it's it's quality of life, and they're they're really concerned about tomorrow, um, and they're concerned about their grandchildren and um, the future, having that quality of life that they so feel so important to them. And you know, it's all about what you consider important, and I consider um, those types of services and people services to Grant County and the 49th district to be utmost top priority. And Representative Trannell, maybe pose this question differently to you since you've been an incumbent there for the last couple of years, but. What is something you'd like to see get done if you are reelected uh, that you were unable to maybe do in your first term? Sure, great question. I, you know, one of the reasons I ran for politics in the first place, I'm a young guy obviously, but I I've always been uh, infatuated with the success that we've had in this country and I always felt like people were starting to become disappointed with uh, those in elected office and I wanted to give them hope that there are good people and young people that care and one thing that I've always done in my office is try to be very accessible and I think when you ask you know what do people in Grant County want it's a very diverse district you know we do have a UW system we have a Southwest Tech uh, in Fenimore uh, but we also have a, a giant diverse agricultural background so very different backgrounds you need some Somebody who can represent and stand up for both of those different constituencies. Uh, I've been able to work with Democrats and Republicans. Uh, I know uh, Carol's campaign is being run by a group called Wisconsin Progressive and that group you know they flatly admit their goal is not to get Democrats elected it's to get liberal Democrats elected and in this partisan uh, atmosphere that we have right now I don't think that's the answer for Grant County um, you know you talk about people living paycheck to paycheck I'm a small business owner I understand what that's like uh, one of the reasons I was skeptical of Governor Walker's budget repair bill is because my suggestion was we need to phase in those contributions over time because you're absolutely right people that are on a fixed income uh, when their paychecks are hit $500 instantly, that's really hard to budget with $3.89 gas, which, you know, that leads to a whole other topic about, uh, you know, energy independence. We have a president who said he was going to do what he could do to lower gas prices, and because of inflation and this debt that nobody wants to tackle, uh, we're monetizing our debt, which is leading to massive inflation. Gas prices aren't the only thing that's high. I just bought milk the other day at about $3 and something cents a gallon. Uh, those, those high prices, inflation, that hits poor people, old people on fixed income, senior citizens, it hits them the most. And I think that's what we have to understand and recognize. So you, you supported Act 10, but you wanted it phased in? No, I time. actually voted against Act 10 because I wanted it phased in over time. Mm -hmm. And when I ran for office, I said, we all have to work together. We can't just uh, do things because we can. And you know the principles of Act 10, I support them. Uh, and what they accomplished financially, but it should have been done differently, and I think Carol would agree with that. But I think uh, for the district I represent, uh, that made sense because people want to know that they're heard, but they also want to understand that you're serious about getting our fiscal house in order. Do you both expect to deal with Act 10? I, either, if either of you is elected, do you expect in the next session to deal with that? And we'll start with you, Ms. Beals. Is this something that still needs to be discussed? I know it's in the court systems now, but, but uh, how do you look at Act 10 at this point in time? You know, I look at Act 10 as the opportunity for people to sit down and have a discussion. I mean, it was railroaded through um, in the late hours of the evening. It did not give due consideration to what was being asked of people, uh, public employees. Um, you know, even though Travis said that he voted against Act 10, um, you were quoted as saying you voted against it because it didn't go far enough. And um, that's, that's extreme. I mean, this bill is something that overnight, instantly, um, had people, you know, three to five hundred dollars short in their paycheck per month. And that three hundred to three hundred dollars per month that was short in their paycheck is money that those people turn right around and invest in our economy. So why do we take such a hit in our economy? Because we cut their paychecks. It's a direct correlation. Um, Act 10 or collective bargaining or whatever form it comes out in, 
will definitely be addressed in this next um, bargaining session, or uh, not bargaining session, um, Legislative, Legislative session. Legislative session. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to respond. Yeah. Just, did, was that your quote? And I mean, was it taken out of context? What was well, the? Yeah, was, what was the? How as you what, often what were you see, to, as you often see in politics, I don't blame things the media get here. taken. Yeah, I, I won't. <laughs> but things get taken out of context. Uh, when I campaigned for office in 2010, it was. I mean, we were pacing a 3.6 billion dollar budget deficit mm -hmm. after Democrats had already raised taxes five billion dollars in the previous session. So I said, everything that we do, there's going to be tough choices. It needs to be fair. And uh, when you say, say it didn't go far enough, I wanted to include police and fire because they were exempted from Act 10, which in my book is choosing winners and losers. Mm -hmm. And in order for it to be fair, it needed to be a f to affect everyone. So to, to put that in the context that it didn't go far enough, I take a little bit of an issue with that. But I mean, the bottom line is uh, we hear it over and over again. And the other side of the aisle, they don't have any solutions other than to raise taxes on the wealthy. 2009 in the state of Wisconsin, we created a fifth income tax bracket. Uh, we raised it 7.75%. Uh, it affected 14% of all tax filers in the state of Wisconsin, and it equated to 50% of the tax revenue in that $5 billion tax increase. So we can say we just want to raise taxes on the wealthy, but the reality is, as Carol pointed out, there aren't that many wealthy people out there to make up the differences. So that's why we need to just work really hard, try to grow the economy, make sure that people understand Wisconsin's open for business. CEO Magazine moved us from the 40s to the teens in terms of best states to do businesses in. People are getting the message. We're on the right track in the state of Wisconsin. We just need to keep moving forward. Do you think it'll get back? I mean, we don't know if it'll get back to the floor. Let's throw a crazy hypothetical out there. You get reelected, hypothetical. Yep. Let's, you get reelected. Not, not that crazy. But, but, the, but the composition. Let's say the composition of the assembly is very different. Yep. Um, how do you how do you vote on that then? I mean, uh, are you saying it does need to include those other elements for you for it to get your support? Well, I think what we'll need to ultimately see is the ruling on the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and, and read that to see how it comes out. But. Uh, I mean, we, we can't forget, we did have a statewide referendum right. on this issue. We had a recall. So uh, until we see the, the outcome and read the ruling from the court, I mean, it's pretty premature to say one way or the other. I was other. playing the hypothetical yeah. game as we like to do in the media. Final question. I want, I want I to absolutely to jump that? in. Absolutely. Um, because I think part of what people are um, not quite understanding with the collective bargaining bill, and they, and they, they miss the fact that um, it's having that discussion at the table. You know, private industry, you can go to your boss or your employer any day of the week and ask for a raise or tell them about a safety issue or talk about working conditions. I mean, collective bargaining is much more than just wages and or, you know, benefit package. It has to do with moving the business forward. I mean, um, at the University of Wisconsin Platteville, I mean, we have group discussions with um, the chancellor and his cabinet people about how we do the job and how we do it well together. It's not their way or my way or it's got to be our way. It's a compromise. Mm -hmm. And to not have that discussion and take that whole thing and, and lay it aside and say collective bargaining is not important stops the conversation and stops the discussion. And that's what is wrong about not, you know, about that whole thing. And I think it makes state employees feel devalued. I think that was not one of the biggest mistakes of Act 10. Yeah. You know, a lot, of, a lot of teachers, a lot of people that work at the university, a lot of people at Southwest Tech felt like they're not appreciated. And we should have done a better job of making sure that they know you guys do awesome work. We're really appreciative of that. And this isn't about the value of your work. It's about the, the financial issues that we face in the state. I think you're right. But it's Let, public employees. It's nurses. Yeah, it's, definitely. You know, well, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great discussion here today. I want to close with just each of you, because this is about educating the voters, this uh, this discussion. And what I what I want to give each of you about 30 seconds to do is just maybe sum, summarize why people should vote for you. What separates you from your from your opponent, and we'll start with Mr. Tranel on this situation. Absolutely, thank you. Well, I just want to thank uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank the voters for watching. You know, the choice in this election is pretty easy. If you want to hold the line on taxes, if you want to grow the economy, if you still want to value education, and, and most importantly, value the future that children face by understanding you can't saddle them with billions and trillions of dollars worth of debt. You know, I'd certainly appreciate your support. I've proven that I'm accessible. If you call my office, if you need help, we're we're there. We return phone calls. We return emails. People are very happy about that and you know this climate people want to get away from the partisan bickering and uh, I think I'm a good opportunity for people to do that I've proven that I can do that uh, and uh, I would ask and appreciate your vote in November. Ms. Beals, final word. 
Thank you. Um, I believe that education is probably going to be the, the main difference um, between my opponent and myself. Um, I am public, I am all about education and getting it to grow our economy and I've said that again and again and again. My experience on the county board has given me a very broad-based knowledge of what the 49th needs, what small community needs. I am uh, born and raised there, raised my children there. I don't plan on going anywhere. I think that um, the reality is, is that I have uh, experience with anywhere from elderly to shared revenue to growing job creation. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, one of you, I'm, one of, I'm one of them, you know? Um, and I would totally appreciate their support um, come November 6th. Well, thank you very much to both of you for joining thank us you. in the studio today, and best of luck to both of you on November 6th. My pleasure. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great discussion, you guys. Very good.